Happy Derby. Happy Derby. One week away from Kentucky Derby 149 and roughly a dozen Derby contenders are set to work under the Twin Spires here this morning. Pour that second cup of coffee, have a donut, and be fast and furious on the Kentucky Derby Morning Workout Show presented by Twin Spires. Main track is fast as you can see a beautiful morning, partly cloudy temperature in the upper 40s. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Tim Yacht team train duo of Practical Move and Reincarnate both breezed on Friday morning in Southern California. Lord Miles put in his final work at Gulfstream. All three horses are expected to arrive here at Churchill Downs today. A derby dozen, including seven combined from the Cox and Pletcher Barns, are expected to work under the Twin Spires this morning. And it's opening night at Churchill Downs. The Roxalana is the featured race on the 10 race program. Don't forget, you can watch and wager on all the action at Twin Spires. And don't forget about that Beat the Tipster promo. Joe Christopher and Scott Shapiro joining you, and uh, we are one week away from the Kentucky Derby, and uh, a huge morning it's going to be, Scott. Uh, the finishing touches are going to be put on these racehorses, and I think the trainers would probably prefer to put them in bubble wrap for the next <laughs> week. Without question, happy opening day, opening night. Great to uh, have live racing back shortly here under the Twin Spires. Been a little while, of course, and uh, but more importantly, at the moment, Final preparations, as you said, a lot of the Derby horses, including likely favorite Forte, about to put in their final breeze, Joe. As I mentioned, it's a beautiful morning, and uh, he's very familiar with this perch up on the fourth floor, talking about the third member of our team here this morning. It is Christmas and late April for Brandon Staubel. Brandon, welcome. Thanks, guys. Uh, great to be here. Uh, one of the, I always say this is one of the most breathtaking views in sports right here at the finish line here at Churchill Downs. Just really excited to uh, be a part of this day. Lots of workers and uh, already had a few this morning. Going to need some help today, and she's already been on the show a few times. Going to toss it to the fourth member of the team on the backside, Rosie Napravnik. Hey, guys, and it's so great to be back. What a nice morning we have here. It's a little bit chilly, but if we could um, request weather and a track surface for Derby Day, this would be it. So a great day for these horses to be out here doing their final preparations. And the buzz is coming through and excited to get this morning started. Well, thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Brandon. And now we're going to take a look at some works here in just a moment uh, from some Brad Cox trained runners. But let's get you caught up on the uh, top 20. No changes from yesterday until today. Here are your point leaders. And the vast majority of these horses are on the ground, Scott, and a lot of them are going to work this morning. Including three, the three Pletchers, Forte, Tappet, Trice, and Kings Barnes. As we look to the next page, some runners from there will be working as well. Hit show and verify and working early. We'll take a look at them in a moment. Skip the last one to get in, getting in from California will be soon. John Sheriff, the trainer, legging up Juan Hernandez for the first time. Outside looking in, Cyclone Mischief, Major Dude, Mandarin Hero on the racetrack with his uh, Japanese counterparts already. And then King Russell is number 24. Hit show, a uh, picture there for trainer Brad Cox, one of four horses for him. And uh, he's been a little bit headstrong in the morning, Scott. He was uh, second as the favorite last out in the Wood Memorial. Three wins, five, and five starts. That second was the tough beat in the Wood Memorial. His lone not in the money finish did come here at Churchill Downs, did take advantage of a perfect trip and did so impressively. Two back in the Withers. We're going to take a look at the work from earlier this morning. We're going to see Hit Show on your screen there. He's going to be on the outside of Tappet's Conquest, who was uh, on the Triple Crown Trail during the fairgrounds preps earlier this spring. Let's send it to uh, Rosie. 
Yeah, and I saw this horse out galloping yesterday and drawing, so he is a bit keen in the mornings, but actually the, the rider here was able to really get along with him getting to the pole there, and it's set up really nice to where they're getting to the half mile pole just right together. Um, and this was a really good work, 59 and three, while the rider is just really sitting back. You can see he's kind of got his weight back and his hips holding this horse um, to stay with the workmate and not overtake him too early. And, but the horse really does relax. Like once he gets into the work, once he drops his head and lets him move on a little bit, he does settle into the work. Really powerful moving around the turn into the head of the lane here and striding out beautifully. This is the one, one of the ones from yesterday that I was really looking forward to seeing work this morning. He looks excellent. Yeah, I thought this was a much better work than last week. There wasn't really anything wrong with the work last week, maybe a little headstrong early, but much more relaxed here, striding out well. Thought he was uh, finishing up on the gallop out very well also. I guess my one concern is he isn't a very long horse. I know he's by Candy Rat out of a tap at Mayor. I have some concerns about the mile and a quarter. Maybe he's going to be best as a mile, miler, but uh, obviously very talented. Tap is Conquest. They're getting dusted by Hit Show early part of the gallop out, but uh, he winds up catching up. Here, 59 and 3, the official time, galloping out 113 and 4. Galloping out a second faster, verifying. We're going to take a look at that work in just a moment, but let's take a look at his credentials first. Scott, another one trained by Brad Cox, just two for six lifetime. But that notable placing in the Bluegrass, one of the fastest preps we've seen this season behind Tappet Trice. Yeah, ran a winning race in Lexington, the Lexington area last time out and took a noticeable step forwards, both from a speed figure perspective as well as just visually. He ran really well, was unable to hold off Tappet Trice. Regally well-bred son of Justify out of the damn Diva Delight, which makes him a half to Midnight Bizu. Interesting sparring partner for verifying ever so mischief by into mischief. Very well bred. 0 for 1 lifetime. Was second in a very fast six furlong race at uh, Aqueduct back in February, Rosie. Interesting uh, work made here. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a strategy to putting kind of a quick horse in front of verifying, being one of the horses that could really show speed in the derby, but he was actually pretty rateable going into this work. They started off really slow going to the pole, um, but again, a really nice work, a, a pretty quick work in 59-2, and two, um, and doing it very easy alongside the workmate. Um, he did go nice and relaxed to the pole, kind of a slow pace, but around the turn, he just within strides is almost overtaking the workmate before they turn for home and here you can see the riders up uh, over his back not really asking him for much and he looks like he's really striding out and moving really well down the lane here yeah i thought this was an excellent work this horse has trained uh, exceptionally well since he came to the track at two they galloped out as joe mentioned a little bit faster i, I thought to also to just to keep an eye on the maiden when this one shows up too i thought the maiden worked equally as well uh, there you can see verifying on the outside reaching out and uh, really, never really asked both horses never really asked to do much in typical brad cox fashion they're going to uh, finish up to around the backside Again, 59 and two for verifying, 59 and three for hit show, verifying galloping out a second faster. Uh, those team workouts for Brad Cox earlier this morning. We're gonna see a lot of horses work today. A couple of more for Brad, all three big guns for trainer Todd Pletcher, including the likely favorite for the Kentucky Derby, Forte. He's four for four, Scott Shapiro, in his two turn races. Six for seven in the careers, you see four grade ones. His resume absolutely speaks for himself. He's been the favorite in the last several future wagers. The question with him is, has he reached his pinnacle or can he take another step forward from a speed figure perspective? He's kind of run even races over his last few. He's gonna work uh, during the 7.30 training period with Irad Ortiz Jr., the Derby rider in the saddle as we take a look at a gallop uh, from just yesterday, Rosie. And talking about his resume being impressive, his impression here out on the racetrack is also equally as impressive. He's not a horse that overdoes it in a gallop, but he comes out really confident in himself. He's moving well on the track and he's not doing too much. I mean, he's not uh, not pulling his rider. He looks really relaxed, got his ears forward, not bothered by the atmosphere at all. I really liked this gallop for him yesterday and it was one of the first times I got to lay my eyes on him in person and uh, really loved this horse. Yeah, I think confident is a great way to describe this horse. A couple other terms I kind of wrote down, professional and an excellent mover as well. And I think uh, being by violence that the way that this one is uh, very efficient with this stride kind of helps him win the distances increase. And I thought the work the other day was pretty good. 38-3, 102, so finished up well, galloped out strong. There's nothing really to knock um, other than maybe the price that this one might be. 
Let's go know. from Forte to tap at Trice. Another one trained by Todd Pletcher, two-time Kentucky Derby winning trainer. Uh, this one will be ridden by Luis Saez, who will be award, aboard for the work at 7.30. And uh, when Luis rides tap at Trice, he gets a workout. He sure does. And uh, four for five in the career. Not quite the same resume as his stable mate Forte, but not too shabby with those wins in the Bluegrass and the Tampa Bay Derby class. Ability to get the distance and desire a win, not a concern. But what kind of trip will he get? I think his post position is as key as anyone when we draw him on Monday, Joe. The most expensive horse in the field, $1.3 million purchase, and Rosie, uh, he looks like a million bucks. He does look good on the track here, and he's really kind in his gallops. Like, you can tell he's out there happy to be doing his job, but he's not tugging on his rider too much, and he's out there being a professional, doing his job, but not doing too much. Um, I was laughing at what you said, that when Luis Saez rides this horse, he gets a workout. In his races in the afternoon, he's a horse that I <laughs> I would joke when I was riding as a backbreaker because you almost have to ride him the whole way and your low back gets so tired out there on the track. So he is one that I think a question of his running style, you know, if he gets stopped, what happens um, in a 24 horse field? And honestly, as much as I love Forte, I have the same concern for that horse. Uh, his stride has got to be 30 feet long and so if he gets stopped what kind of momentum is that going to take away from him he's had some clear runs on the outside um, I love I love Forte but a little bit concerned about that and this horse I would just be concerned about being in a big field and not having a clear clear run to make a big move yeah, another excellent mover, and uh, I thought the work was effortless. Uh, galloped out well, 113 and change. And if you look at the bluegrass, yeah, Sias did have to put him in the race early, but on the backside, Tappet Trice did all of that himself as far as going to the outside and going to the uh, near the front. So this is a horse that we talk about horses moving forward uh, at this time of the year in the Kentucky Derby. This guy seems to be moving forward. The oldest horse in the field, but tied for the least experience with Mage is the next horse we're going to take a look at. That is Kings Barnes, born on January 17th. That is a very, very early fall. And this horse is a perfect three for three. Gate to wire win the Louisiana Derby last time. Has taken advantage of perfect trips in all three of his first three starts of his career. But that's something that's a quality that he possesses. His tactical speed allows him to put himself right into the race. You know, lot to ask Joe of a horse with only three starts, but Kings Barnes has the pedigree and the look of a horse that's not going to get tired. We'll see what kind of trip can be worked out. With Irad Ortiz on the favorite Forte and Luis Saez having ridden Tapet Rising and being a good fit for him, Kings Barnes is without a rider, which is crazy, but Jose Ortiz is going to be aboard for the work and uh, would be an obvious candidate to ride for Top Fletcher as you take, see, uh, take a look, Rosie, at Kings Barnes and his gallop from yesterday. Yeah, and I liked his gallop yesterday. Again, I mean, you don't see many of the Todd Pletcher's horses come out and not act like professionals. Um, but again here, uh, he's, you know, just out here doing his job. He's got his ears pricked, not worried about the atmosphere. He is holding his tail out a little bit straight here in the gallop. And sometimes that can be like just a sign of like tightness in their back. And if you think about it, these athletes are out here. Uh, training up to this race like a like an athlete training for a marathon so there's you know there's always the the reasons that they get a little tight but I I that's my one question about seeing his tail out behind him kind of straight I was look I do I do like this horse and I'm looking forward to seeing him breeze and see how he looks on the track uh, hopefully this morning I was out here for his last work the first work here at Churchill um wasn't super flashy to the wire with his mate, but was really impressive on the gallop out on the backside. And as Scott kind of mentioned, could seems like he can run all day. And I, that's what I saw in the work. Uh, so he's definitely got the stamina. Little concerned he didn't really have to work too hard last time in the Louisiana Derby. Got that really soft uh, pace to uh, set up front and had plenty to go. And then also Joe mentioned, how about the fact that we're still looking for a rider for this horse? All right, that's a look at the Pletcher Trio. They're all scheduled to work during the 730 training period and uh these fans are going to get to see the derby horses live here at churchill downs hello everybody we also want to say hello to lauren in trinidad marty in virginia kelly from north carolina alan from paducah sarah from new hampshire and a host of others from all over the country all over the world if you have a question via twitter facebook youtube use that hashtag ky derby we'll get to as many questions of yours as we can during the course of the next 45 minutes we're going to take a break here on the Kentucky Derby Morning Work Show. Lots to come. Training with a purpose, defining purpose for Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez Jr. We'll be back with a lot more.
Race to Twin Spires and register with code GET200 to start earning your new player bonus of up to $200. Watch and bet on some of the world's best racing and check out our expert picks and weekly promotions. Twin Spires. Download the app now. Does your horse have the stomach to compete at this level? Your answer is likely yes if your horse uses Reline GI. Reline GI is an all-natural supplement made with patented stomach-buffering HA that helps support your horse's gastric health. Plus, it's Clean Sport certified, so you know it's safe to use while racing. Learn more about Reline GI, because even a horse with the heart of a champion needs a healthy stomach to race at their peak. We are back on the Kentucky Derby morning workout show. Lots of Kentucky Derby workers scheduled about 15 minutes from now. You don't want to go anywhere. We had a lot of Oaks workers this past Thursday uh, with the rains uh, yesterday. A lot of trainers calling audibles. The final Oaks works were on Thursday, and we're going to take a look at some of the Oaks contenders during this segment. And we'll start, as always, with the uh, the points leaderboard. As you can see, the maintenance uh, during the renovation break here at Churchill Downs. And uh, anticipation continues to build, uh, seeing those works from this morning earlier, some of those Gallup videos as well, and the Pletcher Trio, and a whole lot more to come. Looking forward to it. Great to see a lot of fans out here ready to uh, a week out, getting that derby fever as well. But, uh, yeah, just 15, 14 minutes until uh, we start seeing these horses put in that final breeze, Joe. Opening night tonight, mm -hmm. Dawn at the Downs tomorrow and Monday. Looking forward to uh, joining those fans up on the fourth floor. Let's take a look at the Oaks leaderboard. And uh, not a lot of movement in the Oaks leaderboard. Board, unlike the Kentucky Derby, Scott, which has 20 horses as a maximum of field, Oaks has 14. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the wet uh, Cox Runners, Wet Pain and Botanical. We've taken a look at the Pletcher Runner there, Gambling Girl, that makes up the bottom. We'll take a look at Defining Purpose, Pretty Mischievous, and South Lawn a little bit here as they make up the three, four, and five slots. Pretty Mischievous was the queen of fairgrounds until she wasn't, as she was defeated in the fairgrounds Oaks by South Lawn, who we're going to talk about in a moment. So we'll get to those two in just a few, but first we want to take a look at the Ashland Upsetter. That is Defining Purpose, and this is her from uh, her gallop uh, yesterday um, for trainer Ken McPeak. Brian Hernandez Jr., who we talked to yesterday, had uh, some glowing reviews of a filly that seems to be coming into her own, Rosie. Yeah, and seeing her on the track, she's not an overly impressive filly to look at, but she certainly is into her gallops um, and really enjoying what she's doing out here. She's, uh, as far as, the, you know, the relationship with her riders, she's she's um, going along really nicely. They're getting along well. She does tug on her a little bit. You can see the riders feed her a little forward and hips a little back, just to try not, not to let her do too much. So uh, striding out really nice. Looks like she's got some swing in her back, uh, feeling good. Ears pricked the whole time. So um, she's certainly feeling good going into this race. A little bit of an off track on the Friday morning. That's why a lot of the trainers uh, did work on Thursday. Uh, we talked about Pretty Mischievous and the success she had at the fairgrounds. And you're going to see her on the inside here in a work uh, from Thursday, Brandon. Yeah, Pretty uh, Mischievous has been a, a good workhorse uh, really since uh, she began uh, coming to the track uh, with Brendan Walsh. There on the inside, you can see the mate was pretty much done, and uh, she's just a really uh, nice into mischief. Her dam was nice. Some concerns about the uh, the mile and, a, and an eighth, but um, always a good workhorse, very talented. Uh, she's going to have a little bit of a say, um, if, judging by this work, uh, going into the race. The connections were very confident going into the Fairgrounds Oaks, and Pretty Mischievous did have the lead in the deep stretch, but she was caught by surprise, according to the connections, by South Lawn, who did post the upset in the Fairgrounds Oaks. And uh, South Lawn trained by Norm Cassie, the son of a Hall of Famer, uh, Mark Cassie. Uh, Norm inching closer to the biggest race of his career. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. Southlawn would give Norm his biggest win ever, his first grade one. This has been a new horse since returning for the three-year-old camp. God loves watching the stretch. Ah, this is an enjoyable moment. Uh, may may or may not have had a wager at seven to one, but what a good effort here. Ray Gutierrez, a patient ride, made an aggressive move, two back, but coming into this race, opted to relax this horse, and boy, did she finish strong. Pretty mischievous. Ran a good race that day. The Alice Look, who's in this field as well, you'll see him third, but it was all Southlawn in the end. Southlawn with a fast second-to-last work and a slower work uh, most recently. Uh, trainer Norm Cassie uh, looking very forward to putting her in the starting gate. He's had a great start to his young career, but uh, in search of the big horse. We had a nice easy half mile, 48 and change. Didn't really make her gallop out too much, and that was by design. Her last two works have been really flashy. She went 58 and change two weeks out, and I just didn't want to do too much with her today. We were kind of, you know, we, we don't want to empty the gas tank yet. True professional. Um, she's just, she, she's class. She's a class horse. She's a beautiful horse. She has all the attributes to be a really talented horse, and uh, you're seeing that in the afternoon. The way that our barn's been going, we've been w winning a lot of races, and uh, people are really starting to notice us, but we need a big horse, a life-changing horse, and I, I'm hoping she's that, she's that horse. Norm Cassie winning races got about a 27% clip to begin 2023. Tremendous Oaklaw meet always does well here under the Twin Spires. A lot of horses will be running for Norm over the coming days, but this is the biggest one, South Lawn and the Kentucky Oaks. We'll switch gears uh, from the Oaks back over to the Kentucky Derby. Rocket can, well, can he? If he does, Scott, he's going to have to do it with blinkers on for the first time. Well, he's run well here at Churchill with a win and a second in two tries. He's going to have to run faster than he ever has to compete with the top runners in this crop. A little bit underwhelming effort with a pretty good voyage as the 5-2 the favorite in the Arkansas Derby. Did run second to Forte, two back in the Fountain of Youth. He's scheduled to work tomorrow for Hall of Famer uh, Bill Mop, but we're going to take a look at a gallop uh, for Rocket Can from yesterday, and uh, we'll send it back uh, over to Rosie. And Rosie, we talked about this yesterday. Blinkers were on for the work. Blinkers are going to be on for the Kentucky Derby first time at a race, but uh, not galloping in blinkers. No, and this horse is super laid back. He actually did school in the paddock yesterday as well, and then came out of the paddock to start his gallop and was just absolutely nonchalant about the whole thing. Um, but he's a, you know, he's a nice relaxed horse. So perhaps with the blinkers, they're looking to sharpen him up in this 20 horse field uh, to get a little bit of a better, you know, a, a, to, to assure that they get a good position with him. Yeah, I was disappointed with the Arkansas Derby a little bit for this horse. Um, got a perfect trip and then ended up, uh, couldn't really even finish or out, out close some of the closers that came running late. Uh, the blinkers go on looking for some improvement. I'm going to go out on a limb here too. This could be a little bit of a wild card for the pace scenario. This horse, when you watch his replays, he breaks really well. With the blinkers, if he gets a good break, they may be sending for the front end. One I'm going to keep an eye on for a long shot. One of only three horses that has a win here under the Twin Spires going into the Derby. Uh, the other two being Confidence Game and two fills. Again, this is Rocket Can for the Hall of Famer. Uh, Bill Mott did win the Kentucky Derby a couple of years ago via disqualification with Country House. Let's go from Rocket Can to another horse uh, that has been based in Florida. That is Mage. Uh, Mage coming in off that runner-up performance and a good one it was. Got broke slowly, wide on the turn. Had the lead late, but was caught late by the likely Derby favorite. Has never run outside of Florida, including that last effort that you referenced, Joe, with the troubled voyage, wide voyage, slow break in the Florida Derby. I don't think the talent is questionable here. This son of good magic has a lot of upside, but is the Derby with just three starts and one win a little bit too much, too quick. Joining uh, Kings Barnes, uh, to your point, as the two horses in this field that did not race at age two, a horse is uh, with that qualification. One for 71 in the Derby since 1937, Rosie. There's Mage. Yeah, and this horse ran such a big race um, in the Florida Derby. But if you watch that race, he's taking about two strides for every one of Forte's. And he, you know, he has a little bit of a shorter stride going on the track here. But, uh, you know, nothing, nothing really wrong with him. Um, he, he's happy to be out here and galloping. He's getting along with his rider really nicely. They look like they know each other quite well. Um, and, you know, nothing really to say too negative about him, but he does have a little bit of a shorter stride. 
Yeah, I would say he looks um, just on the video. I'm interested to see uh, first first time on track, but looks a little bit uh, smaller compared to some of the other horses. But it looks like a good mover. The last race was really good. I thought you could argue that he actually ran a little better than Forte, given that he broke, completely missed the break, was last and made that wide run. Uh, just a really nice runner and um, trying to figure out what the ideal distance is too for this horse as a lot of these runners may end up cutting back in distance down the road. Carrie Thomas and Pete Dank with their Herd Dynamics report coming out. Speaking of the personalities and the sizes and what these horses, you know, may be like mentally in a 20 horse field. That report's coming up this week. Looking forward to it. It will. We'll get to talk, touch a little bit more on it early next week when things calm down a little, but highly recommended you can get that on Brisnet. All right. Taking a look at uh, some of the fans gathering. Again, the morning works for the Derby horses about five minutes from now. We got a little bit of time to take on some social media questions. And earlier today, I said it was Christmas in April for Brandon Staubel. Well, Carl from Christmas, Indiana <laughs> has a question for Brandon. And uh, Brandon, your first appearance on the show today. But but you've had a keen eye on these horses for months and uh, obviously the weeks leading up uh, to the Derby. He wants to know what Oaks and Derby horses have impressed you the most on the racetrack so far. Well, you know, I'd, I'd love to say that I've got these crazy 20 to 1 long shots that I'm looking at. But uh, right now it's been the, the Brad Cox, the uh, Todd <coughs> Fletcher runners. Um, they have been very impressive. Verifying in particular uh, this morning worked really well. Uh, seems to be coming into his own. And then uh, the runner that he faced in the bluegrass, Tappet Trice, also has been very impressive. As far as on the Oak side, I'm very, very impressed with South Lawn, the way this one's coming into the race and seems to be uh, getting better. And uh, Botanical also is one that I think uh, – switch over to the dirt. Uh, we may not even know how good she really is. She might be better on the dirt. We'll go to uh, another question from an aspiring rider, Rosie. This is Christine from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and she wants to know if you can explain your personal preparation before a big race, two-time Kentucky Oaks winner, and uh, how nervous did you get before these big races? Well, I wasn't really a person who was known for nerves, but I think different people as uh, handle nerves a different way and my body's response to nerves was to like go to sleep so I, you would see me napping in the jocks room you'd see me yawning um but as far as preparations and and I was grateful for that response to nerves because I think that that helped me as opposed to you know being jittery or not being able to sleep the night before um the nerves don't really come out until uh, you're on the track and, you know, it's a bit, there's all the hype and the, the crowd and the horses are, you know, trying to keep themselves composed. But as far as preparations, um, you know, the more prepared you are, the less nervous you feel. And it just happens to be a whole lot of preparations when there's 20 horses in the field. Um, I wanted to know everything that there was to know about each horse in the Derby um, and the riders as much as I can know. Most of the riders I was riding against regularly, but if there was riders that I wasn't as familiar with, I wanted to know what their styles were, what their tendencies were, you know, would they tend to be faster on a slow horse out of the gate or, um, you know, how, how do they, uh, what are their tendencies in a pace scenario? Are they going to let another jockey go if that jock is riding more aggressively? That type of thing so that you can best predict how the race will set up um, so that you can best uh, predict what will be the best trip for your horse. So all my preparations done as close to the race as possible and just had numbers going through my head walking into the paddock. One more question before we send it to a break and prepare for the training period for the Derby horses. Uh, this one's for Scott, and uh, he's hoping you hit a three-pointer from the logo, Scott. This is Baller from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. He's got $100 to bet on the Derby, and I don't know if he wants you to give him the horse that you like to bet on or how to use that money, but he basically said, what should I do? Yeah, well, look, I mean, this could be a conversation, a multiple-hour conversation. The first thing, though, whenever established, whether you have a $100 budget, $20, $500, is to establish your opinion on the favorite, Forte. You like Forte? If so, you might want to consider horses to find underneath. Key him on top of the exacta. Key him on top of the trifecta. If you don't like Forte, he's a horse that you should be willing to let beat you outright. Don't use him defensively in a 20-horse field. Instead, figure out a long shot or two. Maybe bet the horse you like most to win. Play some exactas there. You can spread a little bit more because you are playing against the favorite. But a lot of ways to go. $100 budget for me. I'm definitely tossing Forte. Well, thanks for condensing that from a multiple-hour conversation. But there is a rumor that uh, we might be doing a spaces with Travis Stone on Tuesday. So do keep a lookout for that.
All right, let's take a look at some great promotions for Twin Spires. It is officially Derby Week because we open tonight, Scott. Happy Derby Week, Joe. Uh, money back offer. Popular. Been around for a while. Twin Spires going back to it for the entire Kentucky Derby Week. Get up to $10 back on your win bet if your horse finishes second or third. You got to opt into the promotion. The key here, money back. That means the money comes back to you rather quickly. Be in that account so you can gamble it just shortly later. Joe. Well, I entered the Beat the Tipster competition i can only qualify for half of this because i'm going to try to beat you good luck and i can only time myself so tell us what it's all about it's going to be a good one it's going to be fun tonight joe and i giving selections for all 10 races your job is to opt in and then make as many winning win wagers as both joe both Joe and I, or just me, you win a share of $2,500. If you beat one of us, if you beat both of us, you win a share of $5,000. One point, Joe, earned poor winning win wager. And we will be keeping track of that, I believe, on social media, race by race. So uh, best of luck to all of you that try to defeat Scott and I opening night at Churchill Downs. Coming up, the moments we've been waiting for, Derby Oaks horses on the track, several of them with their final breezes before the Kentucky Derby. We'll be right back. Race to Twin Spires and register with code GET200 to start earning your new player bonus of up to $200. Watch and bet on some of the world's best racing and check out our expert picks and weekly promotions. Twin Spires, download the app now. Does your horse have the stomach to compete at this level? Your answer is likely yes, if your horse uses Reline GI. Reline GI is an all-natural supplement made with patented stomach-buffering HA that helps support your horse's gastric health. Plus, it's Clean Sport certified, so you know it's safe to use while racing. Learn more about Reline GI, because even a horse with the heart of a champion needs a healthy stomach to race at their peak. We are, we are back on the Kentucky Derby morning workout show, and I believe that's disarmed because I see uh, Scott Blasey, the first in command underneath Steve Asmussen for that uh, Hall of Famer's barn. We'll take a look at disarm. He's scheduled to work. Angel of Empire, Forte, Tapatrice, and a whole bunch more. Ten horses on an estimate scheduled to work. Their final preparations for Kentucky Derby 149. This is a very exciting moment at Churchill Downs for all of you that are uh, viewing either here live or via one of our many social media outlets. We just saw Angel of Empire walk by. There's Jace's Road. A lot of these uh, horses, Scott, the vast majority of them are going to have their Kentucky Derby riders aboard uh, here today. That's correct. Angel of Empire, Flavian Pratt will be aboard. He was aboard in the Arkansas Derby victory. And there you see Jace's Road. Florent Giroux rode him. Last time out in the Louisiana Derby, which resulted in a third-place finish as these two Brad Cox runners get set uh, for their final preparation, Joe. Looking very forward to it, and we're going to do our best to uh, put you in the moment, get as many of these works broadcast live as possible. The action is going to be fast and furious. Uh, we have Kings Barnes is going to work with Major Dude. I believe Angel of Empire and Jace's Road are going to work together. Is that correct, That's Scott? That's what we have. That is correct. We've got Confidence Game scheduled to work, Mage scheduled to work, Forte is going to go in company, as is Tappa Trice, and uh, Kings Barnes and Major Dude, they've been uh, regular work partners uh, the last couple of moves uh, here locally at Churchill Downs for Hall of Fame trainer Todd Pletcher. And uh, we've got Rosie Naprovnik, we've got Brandon Staubel, and uh, Rosie, why don't you take us in the moment here? There's going to be a lot of workers on the track how do the riders kind of sort out who goes first and uh, what is the pecking order, so to speak? <laughs> well, that's a good question, but I don't have a great answer for it. <laughs> you know, it, it kind of depends on who gets over there first, which it looks like it's going to be Tappet Trice turning around. 
um, here at the 7 8 pole and they're going to head off. So they're trying to get in line first. Um, then you'll have a bunch of horses head over um, a little bit further to the front side and wait by the wire. Um, I do have Tappet Trice that is going to come by me right here headed to the pole. I believe it's Tappet Trice. Yep. Um, <clears throat> But you'll, they'll line up. A lot of the horses will stand in, and you kind of just wait until you have a clear path. Um, and it's nice that there's, you know, just the Derby and Oaks horses out here, so it's not crowded like it normally would be on a normal morning. All right, Brandon, we're about ready to break off here for the work. I'm not sure who the workmate is. I believe that's a Quivic. Okay, the name of yeah, the very horse. nice. And that's a, that's a nice horse. This uh, was the same tandem for the most recent work. That horse is going to be on the inside, tap trice on the outside. And tell us what we're about to see here, Brandon. Yeah, they're just kind of want to go s slow to the pole here. It looks like they're going to go from the half-mile pole. Another thing to mention, too, just we've got mostly jockeys, for the most part, on these horses. So everybody kind of knows to spread out, give each other plenty of time. The outriders are going to tell these riders to you know spread it out we don't want anything to happen let's just keep our distance and uh, they just broke off from the half mile pole I'll, I'll put the watch on them just one thing to remember too especially when you're watching at home the, the times they matter but at the same time it's more about how they're moving so focus on that first and then you can go back and kind of say okay well they did it well in 59 uh, or in change or a half mile in 47 as uh, Tappet Trice and his workmate are going to approach the quarter pole he looks like he's under a long hold Picked him up in 24 there, and it uh, looks like he's just cruising out there, Rosie. Yeah, I mean, I think you'll see a lot of half miles this morning and just sort of maintenance works. Um, but he, he started off kind of a little bit, you know, tugging at his rider like I'm ready to go. But as soon as he dropped his head, he really relaxed. And he's just, he's really moving beautifully through the stretch here and doing it super, super easy. You can see the workmate, uh, the rider on the workmate just tapping the workmate on the shoulder to try to keep up. But Tappet Trice is easily going to gallop out in front of this horse, I think. Yeah, striding out really well. 48 and 1 on my watch. Um, not an official time, just uh, on my watch. 48 and one with a nice little gallop out. Looks like they'll pick it up a little bit on the gallop out. Minute and three yes. as uh, we have some other workers uh, about to go. Really nice gallop out, don't you think, Rosie? Yeah, you can see the, the rider on Tappet Trice actually tapped him on the shoulder a little bit. So they are looking for a, for a good gallop out on that horse. That looks like Kevin Kirstein's watch 48 and one fifth seconds for Tappet's four for a long drill. Just Got a couple more workers here. Yep, just picked him up from uh, the four Angel and a half. Vampire yep. and Jace's Road uh, working in company. Two derby horses, Rosie. Yeah, um, so we've got Jace's Road is on the inside uh, with Florent Giroux and um, Angel Vampire on the outside. Uh, they look like they're going pretty easy, actually, here. Um, Angel Vampire clearly meant to sit off a little bit, I think, but here he comes up head and head, and they're going to just probably cruise the wire. I think we're going to see a lot of half miles and kind of maintenance type works this morning where a lot of them will be in hand. Um, I, it looks like Angel Vampire might be working just a little bit easier, but it's hard to say because they're really, you know, the jocks aren't asking for much. You had them in 25 and change early, 38 and 1, 49 and 1. So, yeah, Rosie, they're just going very easy. I expect maybe them to pick it up a little bit on the gallop out as uh, Flo on the inside is going to a little, little bit of nudging, but uh, they'll st stay together. Got them in 101 and 1, and then um, I'm expecting, like I said, a little more on the gallop out, get a little more something out of this. It looks like all the riders are coming to the, to the wire real easy and then letting them gallop out, and that's probably going to be the theme here this morning. Yeah, solid gallop out, 114 and 1 is what I've got on my watch. Um, you can see the outside horse, uh, maybe just a little more on the out. Angel of Empire, 101 and 2. Jace's Road, 101 and 1 on Kevin Kirstein's watch. And really nice gallop out there from Angel of Empire. Actually put up several uh, several links on the workmate there, so that was that was very impressive. We'll go to Forte next for Todd Pletcher. We've already seen uh, Tappet Trice, 48 and 1. You're working with Bright Future. Bright Future for uh, Forte. Uh, Tappet Trice with Amelia Green aboard on the outside of Carlos Quevedo with a Quiva K. And now we're going to see Forte. I read Ortiz Jr. scheduled to be aboard here. Humberto Zamora, Bright Future, will be on the inside as we send it back down to Rosie. Yeah, it looks like uh, <clears throat> they're, as they're heading to the pole here, Forte's tugging on him a little bit, but he's, you know, he's a, he's a kind horse. He just knows what's getting ready to happen. So he's tugging on him a little bit. He sees his workmate lining up 
and they're just trying to get to the pole here even. Um, this is really common for the, the outside horse to be a little bit further behind coming to the pole so that they're not um, encouraging each other too much before the work is supposed to start. So there you can see the workmate, the riders dropped his head a little bit to let him run out in front of Forte. <laughs> Give him a little bit of a target here. And you know, it's not surprising that you know, Forte, he's got a big, long stride, but he's also a horse that needs a little bit of riding out of the gate type of deal. So um, you can see Ired's knees are kind of popping up and down. He is asking him to work a little bit. And then once he gets into stride, he's probably just going to end up in cruising mode, just as sort of the type of horse that he is. But cruising down the lane here. Uh, I'm going to come in front of Brandon here. Yeah, this was uh, looks like a carbon copy of kind of the last work. Uh, maybe not the flashiest workhorse, kind of just did the job and then uh, extended his lead out on the gallop out. Uh, we've also got confidence game uh, behind this team also who broke off from the three-quarter pole. At least that's where I picked him up. Forte, nice looking stride to the line. Ryder never moved the hands. And uh, as you pick them up on the gallop out, Rosie, we'll see if they get uh, busy with a little bit extra. You can see maybe the, the flag of the stick there. Yeah, they're just about to come over into my view. And it looks like he's galloping out pretty easy. But, you know, a horse that definitely in the morning, I'm not surprised to see he doesn't do much more than what he's asked. Yeah, nice little gallop. I, easy gallop out around here at the three-quarter pole. Yeah, confidence game. Uh, I've got that work for confidence game. Six furlongs and 111 and change. That's a, that's a serious work. So uh, hopefully we were able to catch that. Yeah, confidence and then games. we've got Mage finishing up to the line here too, uh, reaching out, yeah, you know, reaching out really well. So a uh, couple of nice works there, right behind Forte, but Forte galloping out on the backside, and uh, probably you know, the prototypical words from the trainers: uh, we got what we wanted out of the work. Lots of action here this morning. As advertised, you just saw Forte, the likely favorite for the Kentucky Derby, work in company with Equivoque, who's a nice horse in his own right. We've got Mage in 116.4. Uh, that's his official time. Brandon Staubel reporting the confidence game <laughs> may have went uh, about five seconds faster. So we'll see what we have here on tape as we take a look at some of the other horses on the racetrack uh, during this designated training hour. And here we go. We've got Confidence I Game. We're going to take a look at uh, Confidence Game right now. We've got that uh, via tape. This was just moments ago. And, Rosie, this is a very fast work. Yeah. I mean, he looks like he's a little bit aggressive here. Um, and he looks like he's moving along really well. You can tell. I mean, it's not uh, totally unexpected that if he's this aggressive of a workhorse, he's working by himself. They don't really want too much help to push him along. But he's got a huge stride and really, really pushing out. Yeah, reaching out well. Uh, we just had a surprise. You never know what's going to happen. Derma Sotogaki just broke out of the starting gate. I don't know if this is going to be a little bit of a pop or not, but, uh, yeah, looks like they're going to pull him up. So Derma just broke from the gate. But confidence game, I mean, that was super impressive on the watch, and he looked like James Graham up uh, just doing it easy to the line. I mean, that's a serious time. We'll have to get confirmation uh, on if it was on my watch and then actually where the horse broke off from. But like I said, I picked him up from the six furlong pole to the wire and 111 and change. I mean, that's a, that's a very serious work. I've got a pair of um, Pletcher horses going to the pole on the backside here. Yeah, I think we have Kings Barn and Major Dude uh, about to break off. Do we have inside outside on there? I believe. Yeah, it's just hard to tell. Uh, looks like they're going to go a half as well. I think was that Mage that I saw galloping out right before we had the confidence game work? That horse galloped out extremely strong all the way down to the five eighths pole. Yeah, Mage looked really good, Rosie, uh, reaching out well down here to the line. And I uh, mentioned on earlier, I thought maybe he was kind of a smaller type, but he's more mid-sized and uh, looked pretty good. King's Barn will be on the outside. Major dude has been working on the inside of him. I don't, don't, don't quote me on that, but here's the team. Uh, Rosie, let's send it back to you. Yeah, we've got, um, it looks like King's Barn's on the outside here. Um, and I'm not sure what pole they broke off of. They, it seems like they started out maybe a little bit slower, but they're moving along pretty quickly, it looks here. And King's Barn looks great on the outside. He's really striding out. Yeah, I picked him up from the uh, half mile pole, 24 and one on my watch that opening quarter, and uh, yeah, you can see him reaching out well. Uh, interested to see with Kings Barn, 
I mentioned I was out here for the work last time. They did most of the work on the gallop out, and he galloped out extremely well. I'd like to see the same here. Well, I mean, he's still a neck behind the workmate, but the rider was not moving on him at all. And now, after the wire, looks like he's just um, asking him to gallop out a little bit better. So that might be a, a specific um, strategy for this particular horse, is yeah. to, to really gallop out. 48 and minute and one on my watch. So they're definitely picking it up now. Nice little battle here to the uh, six furlong marker. Major dude, who I believe is going to run in the American turf, giving uh, Kings Barn uh, quite a little battle there. One it almost looked like that work could have been set up to go most, like the 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 purpose of it between the three eighths pole and the seven eighths pole, which sometimes they'll do with a horse they really want to move out after the wire. Major Seems Dude has done his best running on the turf. He ran a good second to two fills in the Jeff Ruby stakes, so that's a graded stakes horse there, maybe a better on another surface. He's been a good workhorse on the dirt, though. We saw this matchup before, and um, he's got the big boy blaze on his face. Kings Barnes with that plain face was on the outside, so you see these two following the work, and uh, they've been sparring with each other here the last couple of weeks at Churchill Downs. Kings Barnes, Tappet Trice, Forte, all uh, getting their work in for uh, for Todd Pletcher. Uh, anybody else out there? Do we have anything on Mage? That's the one that we. <sighs> There's Mage on screen. We believe right there. the work on Mage was timed in one sixteen and four for six furlongs, and uh, obviously, you know, you see workout times. You know, we saw the confidence game. We don't have an official time, but Brandon's saying 111. Much faster, but again, it's how they do it. And Brandon mentioned the gallop out on Mage. We do have that, and uh, we're going to take a look at that right now. This was just moments ago, and uh, we'll send it back down to you, Rosie. We'll send it uh, to Brandon. Yeah, here you can see Mage. So um, he's been working at Gulfstream, based in Florida, and uh, this is – Similar as far as time goes to, so I think, a lot of the works down in Florida, more built on uh, making sure the horse is, is plenty fit. Uh, we already know he has speed. They don't really need to see the speed that much in the works. It's more about getting the fitness underneath, galloping out well, uh, moving well through the wire, and then uh, having plenty of horse on the backside. Seems like this horse, too, for this for. A, a little bit of a speed horse. I know he's had some trouble out of the gate, but he really listens to the rider. You can see the rider's got his hands pretty low. And I was just really impressed uh, with the reach down the lane uh, and then moving well through the wire. See that long rain and that big blaze on the chestnut. They're picking it up at the quarter pole here. Hadn't moved his hands yet. Probably going to just uh, give him a little nudge, just kind of say, okay, let's do a little something. Keeping him out wide just to make sure maybe we're not doing too much. And uh, as Rosie mentioned, that big gallop out uh, that we'll see uh, just really getting a lot of fitness underneath uh, for the additional mile and a quarter. Uh, well, the, the extra furlong for the mile and a quarter on Derby Day. You know what, Brandon? This horse looks like he does whatever the rider asks him to do. Like he was almost at the beginning yeah, of this looking like he was in a gallop. And now, you know, he's really picking it up. And obviously the mile and a quarter distance of the Derby, stamina really comes into play. Yeah, I think about, you know, when we say horses are enjoying their job out there. Doesn't it look like he's just having fun out there? He's just kind of loping along, but he's doing it well. He's just grooving over the track. You can see the rider kind of shake the reins a little bit, just keeping his focus and uh, just kind of a handy horse. You were really impressed uh, with this gallop out, Rosie, and you've been aboard horses in similar situations, the work and then the gallop out. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, it looked like the, the beginning of this work was kind of easy, and then when they turned for home, you could really see the horse's stride quicken. And when he came down the backside, I mean, he was galloping out extremely well, uh, all on his own, rider not really asking him for much, and he went all the way down to the 5 eighths pole pretty darn strong. So um, as much as he wasn't a horse that really impressed me, I was impressed with this gallop out this morning. Brandon, how would you compare what we saw from Confidence Game to what we saw from Mage? I mean, you're going to look at the workout times, and you're going to be like, wow, Confidence Game, 111 and change, Mage 116 and uh, 116 and 4, but two completely different workouts, and uh, I'm guessing both trainers are probably pretty happy. Yeah, I mean, we talk about it all the time. What's the objective of the work? Rosie mentioned it earlier. For confidence game off the layoff, you need maybe a little bit of a sharper work. Obviously, you need a distance work, but obviously a little bit of a sharper work versus Mage, who just ran in the Florida Derby, has that kind of fitness edge, but we want to build a little more stamina and just keep him relaxed so that you have that slower time of the 116. Looking for that time uh, for confidence game. Brandon got it in 111 and change for six furlongs. Again, question about how far the work actually was when it comes to an official uh, timed move uh, by the clockers here at Churchill Downs. We'll pass that information along when we get to it. Uh, 
Fast and Furious, there's Disarm for Steve Asmus, and you see uh, Scott Blasey there on the pony uh, next to him. Uh, what did we see, or have we seen anything from Disarm yet? Brandon, any uh, any reports on what Disarm did this morning? Uh, just a routine gallop, um, you know, with the other workers going and, and knowing that he's probably going to go on Monday. Wasn't really a, a super focus up here, but just kind of did his thing. And uh, you saw him walking off with uh, Scott Blossy, just uh, typical Steve Asmussen style, just keeping him relaxed, letting him take everything in. But uh, just a kind of a normal day for him. Brandon mentioned earlier the Derma Sotagake popped from the gate, and uh, we do have some footage of Derma Sotagake soon thereafter. We're going to take a look at that, and you kind of sort of never know what the Japanese are going to do, but uh, man, this horse is, I, I, I don't know. He's throwing his head around. He's eager. What do you see there, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, uh, I just saw the light on the gate come on, so I was, you know, figured something might happen, and he just had a little gate pop, you know, probably just win uh, at least an eighth, maybe a quarter, just look, get familiar with the starting gate. Um, yeah, he kind of pulled up a little awkwardly, just kind of tossing his head. Um, is he mad that they didn't let him do more? I mean, to me, this is not what I want to see. Yeah, I mean, he might be a little bit of a, of, of a bad boy uh, of sorts, um, just kind of, you know, wanting to do a little more, wasn't really happy that he, they pulled him up that like that. So, um, you know, as we get, and then we see Disarm also right there. We talked about Disarm earlier, just getting his gallop in. Yeah, just maybe, um, you know, not the coolest customer in the world. He does kind of get a little bit headstrong. I noticed too earlier when uh, the three Japanese horses came out before the Harrow break that um, another set of horses had come by him and he did the same thing. He kind of threw up his head. So maybe he just, I don't doesn't like to be around other horses that much. Rose, you got a horse like that that's a little bit tough in the mornings. Uh, you know, what can you do as a rider? Uh, with a horse like that, I mean, he looks like he's very strong. But, I mean, in the horse's defense, breaking out of the gate at the quarter pole and then being pulled up at the um, after the wire is, you know, it's, it's kind of a tough mental uh, game for the horse of, you know, this is when, you know, we break out of the gate. This is when we mean business and we're going to do something. Normally you'd have like a bigger, a longer work after um, a gate work. At least that's how most of the horses would train in this country. And you can see like, as, it seems like as soon as he popped out of the gate, the rider is trying to pull him up and the horse is just kind of misunderstanding, um, you know, what are we out here to do? Uh, we just came out of the gate and now you're making me pull up. And as far as the head tossing, I did see him in the shoot here earlier when he was tossing his head. Um, but this is just a little bit of uh, resistance from being pulled up, I think, after coming out of the gate. If so. you make a professional athlete like Michael Jordan, LeBron James mad, they play better. <laughs> If you make a horse mad, do they play better? Do they run better? It would probably <laughs> depend on the horse. Some, it might go the wrong way for some, and it might might play in their favor. I mean, there's certainly horses, shoot, there's horses in races where, you know, you can say this horse has to get in trouble to run well. So there's there's all kinds of different individual uh, idiosyncrasies for these horses that, that can either play against them or for them. We will find out one week from today how it plays out for Derma, Sotagake, and the other 19 horses that will enter the starting gate for Kentucky Derby 149. And uh, Scott, you know, the horses are on the track now. Repopulation for the general community of horses that are allowed to go on the track now. And uh, we're going to have final thoughts here in a couple moments. <laughs> There's so many different ways we can go. A lot of different kinds of workouts this morning. Without question. I thought Tappet Trice looked uh, excellent as they uh, referred to as well. Angel of Empire. But uh, just such a great period as we see, uh, like you said, the general population of the horses back on the track after the designated period. But just a uh, real, real cool idea here uh, to have those horses both the Oaks and the Derby horses training on their own giving them the room they need to uh, get those final preparations in and it's great to see all the fans out here as we mentioned before. So Forte outside of Bright Future was 49 and 4 fifths. We do have that coming over just moments ago on Twitter. Kings Barnes outside of Major Dude half mile and 48 and 2 fifths. So that's 48.40 for Kings Barnes and Forte in 49.80. Those are the official half-mile times. Mimi, Miku, uh, Mimi Kikuchi worked a half-mile for the Oaks in 50.40 or 50 and two-fifths, whatever you prefer. Made his official time, as we mentioned earlier, 116.80. Again, that uh, time is slow, but the gallop out was tremendous. 
We're going to go back and uh, look at Forte now, the likely favorite for the Kentucky Derby. Again, he is working on the outside of Bright Future. Final clocking here officially for four furlongs. 49.80, 49 and four fifths as we send it back down to Rosie. Yeah, and you can see that he, he kind of pulls his rider to the pole, but he's just this type of horse there. Once uh, once Irad drops his head, uh, then he's got to ask him a little bit here. And that's just, it's kind of just the type of horse that he is. He's a real big horse with a real big stride, and he, he just takes a little bit to get going. Once he levels out, his stride has got to be 30 feet long, and he's a very, very impressive. Um, so, I mean, I think this was probably exactly what, uh, they were looking for with this horse um, and coming around the quarter pole like he's just cruising here and then um, it looked like they asked for a little bit more on the gallop out yeah just an, an excellent mover as I talked about earlier um, just an easy half to the wire but you know one of those situations where a lot of the time where time doesn't really tell the whole story the, the official time because they galloped out strong minute and change 113 and change so as Rosie talked about earlier it was maybe a kind of like an in-between pole work where they work past the wire and most of the work is done the last three A's yeah now they gallop the out strong here together and and you can see Forte's riders not really asking much from him likely derby favorite forte now that we've seen all of these workouts we've handicapped these races we've watched the replays we've heard all the buzz positive and negative what's left well finishing touches gallops jogs you know walk day for most of these uh tomorrow uh, probably not a huge day on the track for a lot of the derby horses we'll see a lot of the oaks horses but what's left the draw and the post positions, and it's going to be obviously very important. And we're going to draw the Oaks, then the Derby Monday, 2 o'clock. Uh, Travis Stone, the track announcer, will be emceeing that event uh, in the Aristides uh, Lounge. And uh, looking forward to it. I mean, we got the pieces of the puzzle to put together, and uh, it all comes together as far as post positions on Monday. Right. We got opinions on these horses for the most part. Like you said, we saw the final preparations, but when they get in the starting gate, you can kind of visualize the race, which horse is on the inside and the outside, likely to show speed. A horse like Tapatrice I referenced before, the, uh, po the post position going to be important. If he's along the inside, going to be a little bit more difficult for him and many of the other late runners to work out a trip. Well, Fast and furious, to say the least. Four minutes uh, away from the 8 o'clock hour. We just saw a lot in the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes, Scott. I always look forward to finding out what your guys' final thought and what you took from the morning was at the end of the show. I'm really looking forward to it today. There was a lot going on. There was certainly a lot. We'll get to kind of catch up on what we saw, go back and watch the program myself. But uh, the two horses that I have, one, two on the list, both did what I wanted to see. Angel of Empire and Tapatrice doing things easily, strong gallop outs. They're going to need to work out a trip because they're both off the pace runners. But I think as this race has kind of come together a little more. Maybe Cyclone Mischief draws in off the also eligible list. The pace is going to be more honest. I'm hoping those two are running on late. Send it to Brandon Staubel next. And Brandon, you got to see these horses uh, live from your perch. I'm sure you're going to go back and watch these works again and digest everything you saw. Different horses, different objectives. But man, again, a lot going on. What'd you think? Well, I mean, for my first day back on the show, uh, what a way to come back. I mean, it was a, an excellent uh, period with a lot of good workers. Um, I was kind of big on Angel of Empire coming in and maybe even bigger coming out. I love the, the gallop out on the uh, backside. I thought it uh, was probably the best gallop out uh, that I saw the whole morning. Also, uh, I believe possibly Defining Purpose may have worked for Kenny McPeak. And uh, if so, uh, I'll... I'll upgrade her too. I like the way she breathed. And Scott mentioned, I mean, that's a, a great handicapping tool going back and watching these shows. Uh, Rosie, are you going to go back and watch the show? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of the horses that stood out for me today were Forte, of course, and I think that work was maintenance, but also, you know, probably just exactly what they were looking for. I really liked Verifying's work, which was early this morning. Um, Hit Show was one that I was really looking forward to see, and there was nothing wrong with the work, but also didn't wow me. Um, so uh, Forte and... Um, and uh, Sorry, verifying were the ones that really caught out to me. Another one that I liked was Angel of Empire, which is a horse that I've just sort of had my eye on. Um, so it was a really active morning this morning. Um, a lot of a lot of hype here, and now everyone's going to go back and and look at their their PPs again and start to you know evaluate these works and and factor in how the horses are looking out here. 
Um, Kings Barnes is one that I was really looking forward to work and I didn't think there was anything special about his work. He's a really inexperienced horse in the Derby, so I'm going to take all of that into consideration when I go ahead and do a little bit more work on this and really looking forward to seeing the post position draw and all the confirmed riders um, so we can see how the pace scenario may play out with not a whole lot of defining speed in here. We're going to take a look back at a lot of these works, all of them probably tomorrow. We've got Brandon Staubel. We've got Rosie Napravnik on. Caitlin Free rejoins us, you and I. So we're going to have the five of us tomorrow to look back. But just want to let you know, we did get some of these workout times, and I just want to you know, quickly mention the differentiation between a couple of them. Confidence game, 23 flat, 34 and 2. 59 flat was the final workout time officially for five furlongs, galloping out 13 and 2. Mage, and we saw it, kind of looked like he was galloping early. 27 and 2, 40, 52 and 1, 116 and 4, 130 and 1 for the gallop out. Two horses doing two completely different things. Trainers both happy. On the paper, they're going to look very different. Exactly. And Brandon spoke about it. We all have. Times aren't everything. You got to watch and see how they did it. Opening night tonight, Scott. Uh, you excited at all? A little bit. Racing is back, baby. We're back in the Ville. Six o'clock uh, for. Downs after dark, Dawn of the Downs will happen tomorrow and Monday. We'll be on the show tonight. We'll be on the show tomorrow morning as well. Looking forward to it all here at Churchill Downs. That's going to wrap it up for the morning workout show presented by Twin Spires. Again, we will be back tomorrow early at 7 a.m. Opening night tonight. First post will be at 6 p.m. Have a great day, everybody.